Hi guys, welcome back to the Library of Alexandria. And today, guys, today is going to be my October TBR. Now, astute viewers will note that I have not yet released an August wrap-up. And that's true. I should have had it come out last week. But if you'll also notice, there was kind of a dearth of videos from last week. This is because this month, this month has been... Uh, <sighs> Super crazy uh, at both school and just obligations. And my unhealthy habits finally wrote a check that my body was unable to cash. And I got sick. And I've been sick since the end of last week, all through, all through the weekend. And so here is a TBR, which uh, should be, I should be able to get through without, you know, <laughs> hacking. My poor wife is now, is now feeling the effects of my malady. But October should be the month that I finally dig myself out of. Uh, by the end of October, I should finally have read every one of my obligations with the exception of Hero of Ages, which I will definitely get to in November, and Six of Crows, which is my punishment book from many, many months ago that I need to read. Because I really want to do another challenge game, but I cannot yet do another challenge until I have taken my medicine and taken my punishment from the last failed challenge. So that'll be in November, hopefully. Uh, but here, without wasting any more time, let's get down to business. Let's go ahead and talk about the books that I plan on reading in October. So the first one is Boosh. Blood of the Mantis by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So this is book three of The Shadows of the Apt, part of the August of the Apt read-along that we've had going on this channel uh, since, since August. And man, it has been a ride. It has been so good. Like, this series is so good. I can't believe I had, I, you know, been on book two for over a year before I'd ever even heard of it. So I am... I am super, super excited to continue with this third book, not the least of which because it is 250 pages shorter than book two, Dragonfly Falling. So my suspicion is that this was originally a uh, trilogy and these last two books were split in twain because why would you have books three and four be so, so much shorter? But I don't care. I can't really talk about what it's about. It's going to be a continuation of, uh, of the storylines from the first two. Uh, I anticipate seeing more of the war. There is a lot of war in these books, guys. They're just so good. Shadow of the Apt is a, is a series about these humans who grew up kind of alongside insects and so have taken on uh, some qualities of, their, of theirs. They have uh, powers and abilities that are insect-like, even though they are humans and do look like humans. But it's just so good. It is military fantasy with that flintlock vibe it's just, it's, it's so good. And we had a, we just finished our live show of Dragonfly Falling last month with Shy, Katrina, and Angela. Go check that out if you missed it. It was fantastic. So we'll definitely be continuing with that this month. Guaranteed I get to that book. The next one is an absolute treat. Boosh! Guards! Guards! Now, this is my very first uh, reread since I've been on BookTube. And by that, I mean the first reread of a book that I read while on booktube. I am reading it again. Guards, Guards, book one of the City Watch of the Discworld series by Terry Pratchett. This is the October uh, pick for Shelf Space, and my co-host, my guest host, will be Dr. Philip Chase, who has only read the first two Discworld books, Color of Magic and Light Fantastic, neither of which are my favorites, and now he is going to enter the best of the sub-series, and that is the City Watch. We got Vimes, we got Carrot, we got Colon, we got Knobs, and it's just so good. Guards Guards is my favorite Discworld book. It has so much nostalgia for me. The City Watch is my favorite sub-series. I just love these, these put-upon coppers who learn how to not be incompetent, because you know what? This is their city, and ain't no dragon gonna endanger it. It has some of the best jokes that I remember long after having read it. Just the first Pratchett book in publication order that really feels like all of the classic Pl Pratchett elements come and work together, and it's just absolutely fantastic. From one of the opening scenes with the Dark Brotherhood to Million to one chances. Absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to discuss this later in October with my good friend, Dr. Philip Chase. Make your bets now. Will Philip Chase walk away a fan? Next on the list, we have Boosh Recursion by Blake Crouch. So, this 
is my patron buddy read. So every every couple months, every other month, I do a book uh, that my patrons chose. I have a, a random wheel and they uh, tell me things to put on the wheel. Charmaine <laughs> starts delegating other people because <laughs> I try not to let one person put too many things on there. So Charmaine just ends up giving a bunch of uh, other people her suggestions to put on the wheel and they're like yeah sure that's fine <laughs> this one is actually leslie's leslie it was leslie's suggestion i spun it i got it so i will be reading this uh, as per the request of leslie from the nerdy narrative so i recently back in june read dark matter by blake crouch which was my first blake crouch book ever and it was it, it was good it was good it was it was it was good i didn't love it but i did like it it was just it was very different than what I thought it was going to be. Everyone told me it was going to be life changing, and it just was fine. It was a it was a reality bending sci fi thriller that I am not surprised is being made into a Netflix show. Recursion, I have been told, is similar to Dark Matter, even though I think that Recursion came out first. Let me double check that beastie. Oh no way! This this probably came out second. Dark Matter looks like it came out first because this was 2019. So. I have been told that they are similar and that whichever one you read first will be the one you end up liking more. Where Dark Matter is, uh, I, I mean, about a scientist who's studying kind of quantum mechanics. This one is about an epidemic that isn't really an epidemic that a neuroscientist holds the key to. And I'm sure it will be just as equally thrilling. One thing I like about Blake Crouch is the fact that he writes dialogue as if it were a TV script. So it goes very, 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 very quick. Uh, everything is very quick about uh, Dark Matter, so I'm hoping Recursion will be the same. I have, I, am, I have heard split things. Some people like Dark Matter better, some people like Recursion better. But uh, this is going to be an easy read, I hope. I actually hope that I will enjoy this more than I enjoy Dark Matter. So tune in later this month to see what I thought about that. All right, now we are to the final book that I guarantee you I will get to this month, and that is Boosh, Time of Courage. Why is it so long? This was on my TBR from September, but we all ended up having to push back the Time of Blood show and finishing Time of Blood. So this got pushed back to this month, and it is a beast. So be on the lookout. This third book for the Of Blood and Bone trilogy, uh, be on the lookout for the collab chat with all of the Gwyn crew that we've been that I've been talking to about since Faithful of, of the Fallen. Uh, it'll be super exciting to see how this trilogy ends. I've heard that Time of Courage, people have said that it's Gwyn's best single book. And so if, I mean, that's, that's high praise. Uh, Blood and Bone was good, but I think maybe, maybe my least favorite Gwyn book, not because it was bad, just because it was, it seemed very middle book to me, setting up a lot of things that, I bet have a ton of payoff in this last book. So I'm excited to get to that and I will definitely get to that because I have to prioritize collabs, of course. Now to the books that I am going to try to get to, uh, depending on time, first of which will be Boosh, Cage of Souls by Adrian Tchaikovsky. So this gorgeous, this cover, gorgeous, <laughs> this cover is gorgeous. This is a standalone, another standalone by Tchaikovsky released relatively recently, yeah, 2019, a recent release. I loved his standalone, Guns of the Dawn. I have not read anything else by him other than the first two Shadows of the Apt books. So um, me and a couple other people, I think Angela and a couple other people were going to join us and just kind of try to read this one, see if we like this standalone as well. This is, I think, kind of a post-apocalyptic jungle world where there's only like, what, like 13,000 people left? Oh, sorry, 100,000 people left. And there's this... Um, on this this planet, there's just like one city left and everything else is surrounded by this jungle And I think the main character leaves the jungle and you know adventure ensues I have heard that it is excellent uh, pretty much everyone. I know that's read it I think there's one person that put it down But most everybody who I've heard that's read it has really liked it and I love Tchaikovsky um, I'm hoping to get to this it is it is pretty meaty. How long is this beast? Eh, 550 eh, We'll see if I can get to it, but I definitely am going to try uh, it, it, is, it is near the top of my TBR that I'll be trying to get to uh, soonish, even if I don't get to it this month. All right, and the last couple things that are on this uh, October TBR, I am carrying over. I did not have time to get to the Brian McClellan Powder Mage novella, Servant of the Crown, that I wanted to last month. I have been trying to read a Powder Mage novella every month, but I just didn't have time last month. It, it, it's 70 pages, but I mean, I... Oh man, every day counted with the pages that I needed to get done this month. So I will be rolling that over into, into October. I'll definitely try to read that novella. It is about Tomas and I think meeting uh, Erica, Taniel's mom, 
and I hope it's good. I liked Force Forn, but I did not like Siege of Tilper. My 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 dislike of of that novella is is well known. So I'm hoping I get to that this month because I really I do want to read the Powder Mage. And guys, like I I don't want I I wish I liked Powder Mage more than I do. I am hoping that maybe some maybe some switch will flip inside my brain as I read Crimson Campaign and Autumn Republic that will just change my opinion and I will really love Powder Mage because I really want to. I just at present don't and it makes me sad. The other thing I will definitely be trying to get to is finishing Tagana. I'm halfway through Tagana from June. I just had other obligations. I couldn't finish it. So I am definitely going to try to finish Tagana this month because that is also a patron read and I am doing I am doing wrong by them by not having finished it. So I'm definitely going to try to finish this because Jake Bishop asks me <laughs> every other day if I'm finishing Tagana and goes back on old videos and comments on that I should finish Tagana. So Jake, I'm going to finish Tagana this month for you. And then finally, this is kind of neat. I, I, I got approved uh, for an e-arc from NetGalley for a, uh, a new Adrian Tchaikovsky novella that is coming out in November, and it's called Elder Race. And the premise of this looks really cool. It's like, from what I understand, there's this wizard on this planet who is r really a anthropologist studying the people of this planet, and they go to him because there's this demon that's coming and they don't know how to stop it. So they go to the wizard and they're like, how do, how do, you know, how do we stop it? And who knows what happens then? But that's cool. Like the guy who's supposed to be studying these people and is you know, trying not to interfere. So he's keeping his science away from them has to, has to save them from, what does it say? It says an unbeatable foe. So it's only like 176 pages. So I'm, I'm excited to read that. I just, I just happened to see it. And I was like, you know what? I'll go ahead and boop. I'll go ahead and apply for that. I, I think I applied for that back in August. I'm glad I didn't get it then because I didn't have time. So now it's fine. Again, it doesn't come out until November 16th. So if I don't get it to it this month, I'll just roll it into the beginning of November uh, as I am able. In addition, I do still have Six of Crows that I need to read. It is possible that instead of Cage of Souls, if I have time, I'll sub in Six of Crows just because it needs to get, get done. I know there's a bunch of people who want me to read Six of Crows. I'll be vlogging my read of Six of Crows just because I vlog anything that comes out of the picture O punishments. I know you're all desperately wanting me to vlog an Akamaf read, but Akamaf's not even in the picture anymore because I won the challenge and I removed it and it doesn't go back in unless I lose and it says put in, you know, a previous a previously removed punishment. So I'm I'm pretty free of the Akamaf vlog uh, for a while. So just be rooting for me to lose a challenge. And there is hope for you since Robert Jackson Bennett just Released the the title and cover for what was it Lock Lockland, <laughs> whatever for the third Founders trilogy book, which is the only way I actually lose challenges. Ugh, so depressing. So anyway, guys, what are you most excited uh, to be reading in October? That is it for me. I am going to go take some cough medicine and crash. But as always, guys, information about my Discord and Patreon is down in the description. And I'll see you next time, guys. Mm -hmm.